Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome to your 2017 astrological forecast. It's Raina here, and I am your fellow Sagittarian looking at the upcoming year with the transits. And so anyway, um, probably one of the biggest stories is that we have Saturn in our own sign. And so for Sagittarius, I think that this has actually been, I don't know how you guys feel, but I think it's been pretty good so far. I don't feel like there have been, of course, there's always going to be challenges in life, but I, if I have to have Saturn in any sign, I would rather have it in a sign like Sag. Um, you know, Scorpio is a pretty intense sign. And when Saturn was in Scorpio, it was a pretty intense period of time. Um, just speaking personally, but maybe some of you guys experienced that as well. A transit of Saturn is two and a half years. So it really is the last chance until December of 2017 for Sagittarians to experience this particular energy in their first house of self. So this is the time when Sagittarians can really make, I, I was going to say a name for themselves, but it's more than that. It's just like um, getting some gravitas, you know. Sag sometimes has the reputation of not taking things seriously and therefore they don't get taken seriously. And, uh, it doesn't even matter how old you are. You know, we have such a spontaneity and just an innocence or an openness that some people may take us as naive. Some people may take us as immature and some people may just think that they may underestimate us in some way. Let me put it like that. And I don't know about you guys, but I live in gym shoes. It wasn't always the case because in my particular instance, I have, you know, my son in Sagittarius, but I have Taurus rising. So they say that your rising sign really is a strong influence for the first 30 years. So I was wearing mini skirts and uh, high heels. <laughs> Uh, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm wearing my gym shoes. So um, we're very, you know, s sporty and we're very athletic. I mean, even if you don't feel like you're in shape, you still probably like to walk. You probably like to, you know, just be active. And so with uh, Saturn in that first house, it can get you to like, you know, up your game when it comes to your body. And that may be something that you need that discipline that Saturn provides. So it actually can have a very good influence. If not, you know, make you look more um, professional or whatever it is that we associate with being, you know, particularly competent. And uh, yeah, so that's that's really cool. And I think it... It's just a new cycle. So it kind of sets into motion um, just any kind of foundation that you want to lay down. And um, the other thing that is a longer transit is this Jupiter in Libra, which is going to hit our, our, our um, 11th house of hopes and wishes. Now, I shouldn't say is going to, it is in our 11th house at the moment. And it's so cool because recently I just um, read that the 11th house is the luckiest house. And, you know, some of you who know some stuff about astrology already may already know this, but Jupiter, which is our ruler, is the ruler of the ninth house of travel, higher education, and, and stuff like that, and spirituality. But I thought that would be the luckiest house. And no, they say that the 11th house, which is a natural placement or rule, ruled by uh, Aquarius, is the luckiest house. Now, in our particular chart, we have Libra in the 11th house. So Jupiter is there f until... October of um, 2017. So that can really, um, you know, wish upon a star, wish big, 
You know, Jupiter is big. So make sure that you have big enough goals, big enough dreams to uh, manifest. Because what's so awesome is that, you know, we have these these um, these transits that um, affect us, but because we are Ju- we are ruled by Jupiter, um, I think that would have an even greater greater importance or significance in the coming year. So um, that's something to really take seriously. What kind of things do you want to manifest in your life? You know, where do you want to live? What do you want to be doing? You know, what are the goals that you haven't accomplished yet that you want to accomplish? And it's very interesting, speaking of some of these goals, because another long-term transit is uh, we have Uranus, which is actually the ruler of that 11th house, um, because it's one of the rulers along with Saturn of Aquarius. So we have Uranus in the fifth house, uh, in Aries. And, um, this can be, this is the house of romance, of children, of home businesses, of creative projects. And so, and, and also pastimes, amusements. So if, um, you know, let's say one of your dreams is to write a book, the fifth house having Uranus in that fifth, transiting that fifth house could mean that all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you know, your book takes off and, uh, you know, you become a best-selling author just like that, you know, just suddenly, you know, there's a kind of, uh, an, a surprising element that comes along with Uranus and being in the fifth house, anything creative can, you can either be very original in your ideas you can, you, you might have, um, it could influence the type of people that you meet. If you're single and you're looking for a romantic partner, you may meet people that are quite different than, uh, you know, the typical people that you run across. But for a Sagittarian, that's absolutely up your alley because you're not, um, you know, cookie cutter yourself. You're a very independent person and you tend to be rebellious and it's, it's just, um, so you're interested in people who are off the beaten path. Um, what else could happen? You know, it, Uranus can indicate a lot of independence and freedom. So if you have a, um, a home business, it may afford you the chance to not have to be tied down to an office, tied down to one location. Uranus can indicate a lot of, um, I I was going to say erratic behavior, but it can mean, you know, not being in a consistent pattern. So you may decide, I want to be a gypsy for a while, but I have to make money. So you have something, and it could be an internet business because Uranus deals with electricity and so with the fifth house, or, you know, I, I should say electronics and stuff like that also. So, you know, coupled with the fifth house, it could be something that's based on the internet. So it's just like um, with the Jupiter in that 11th house, that can afford you the freedom to do what you want, that perhaps in years past, you either did not have any kind of notion about wanting to do it, or maybe you didn't even have, not even just ideas, maybe you didn't even have the desire. And now all of that is falling into place. Okay, what else is going on? Well, here's another long-term transit, even longer than some of these other ones. We have Pluto um, in that second house in the sign of Capricorn until 2024. Now, if you're watching as a sun in Sagittarius, then um, this is your solar second house. For those of you with Sag rising, this would be your uh, natal second house. But regardless, um, Pluto in the second house is totally shifting your ideas, transforming your ideas about how you earn money and how you could say how you attract money. And I can vouch for that because it, it 
has been during this transit that I've really fully understood the law of attraction. I had been exposed to it even before Pluto uh, went into Capricorn in 2008, but I really didn't get it. I didn't resonate with it. I remember when The Secret came out that I saw that movie. And for those who don't know, Abraham Hicks, Esther and Jerry Hicks, you know, Esther being the channel for Abraham, um, and Jerry has since passed away, but um, they were the ones that The Secret was based on but they were not in the movie. They were in the movie a little bit, but they were not insignificantly. And I think some people found that the secret was a little bit too crassly materialistic. The goal of law of attraction is to make you more um, of a conscious co-creator. In other words, that you understand your personal power. But you know, to emphasize, oh, and then you can have this, you know, beautiful red sports car, you can have this or that, that like kind of brings it down to a mundane level. It's, there's nothing wrong with a red sports car, but that's not the highest expression of the law of attraction. And so that's kind of like, I think where they were going with that and where the critique was. So, um, you know, everyone should realize that the, just like what I just said about the 11th house of hopes and wishes, um, all of us have different dreams. And, and sometimes people are really taking their dreams seriously, and so they become goals that they are actually acting upon. And the motive behind that is to achieve a certain um, sense of well-being, right? Right. Even if you say, I want to have a McMansion, it's because you want to, you think that that will make you happy. So there's always like kind of an emotion behind that. It's just that the McMansion is a means to, to the end, to an end. So um, that's what I'm trying to get at. And I think that with this situation with Pluto in the second house, some of you may have kind of quite started questioning your, your ideas of like, how do I make money? Do, you know, do I really have to worry about it? Do I really have to kind of like sit there and wring my hands or do I have to work three jobs so that I can, you know, protect myself in case one of, in case I lose one of my income streams? Am I too fear-based? All of these things come up, and in Capricorn, Capricorn is a conservative sign, and the word conserve means to, um, you know, keep um, and to preserve, you know, to not waste, to not be um, thoughtless about. And so Capricorn in the second house can indicate people that, have a very ambitious uh, desire to earn a lot of money um, because Capricorn is also about ambition. And, uh, you know, certainly Sag is noted for luck because of that Jupiter connection. And that could certainly happen for any of you. But with Pluto transiting the second house, there can be like quite a transformation. It's like when it's over with, you may not know who you were going in, in terms of like how you see yourself as somebody who can attract money to you. And I feel like at first I was afraid that it would be a negative influence, but it's been a very positive influence for me because I think that, you know, Pluto um, really connects with strength. And so, or I mean, uh, power, I should say. And so I think it can really empower us to make as much money as we want to make and to really feel like we deserve it, which is part of that whole thing about, um, you know, law of attraction and, uh, you know, how do you bring something to you? Well, you, first you have to feel like, you know, you have the right to have it in the first place. So another thing I wanted to talk about is Pisces and Chiron. They are in the fourth house of home and family. And I remember, you know, watching another video uh, where an astrologer said something about, you know, Pisces in the fourth house, um, well, transiting 
uh, si uh, planets, and Chiron is actually like an asteroid, but um, this energy in the fourth house and how that can lead to floods and things like that. And personally, I, I know for a fact that I've dealt with uh, plumbing issues uh, more than once during this transit, and some of you may have. And if you li live in a floodplain, you know, just uh, take that under advisement. But in terms of the effect that both of these elements is having on our sense of home and family, there may have been pain that was brought up, but there may be healing as well that's taking place. That has to do with family issues, maybe family of origin issues. And um, it's very interesting that Chiron and Pisces are both, that Chiron and uh, Neptune are both in Pisces at the moment, because um, I think um, I just read something that Chiron is associated with Pisces in terms of what it represents, which is kind of like a suffering um, but it's, it's not just like this needless suffering. It's showing us where we need to heal. And when you have Neptune, Neptune is so idealistic to the point where it can be delusional. So there may have been things about your childhood that you kind of glossed over. And, you know, things may have come up since Neptune went into Pisces. And I, I you know, one of these days I'll actually look up when that happened. I think it was around 2012 or so. But that may have been a time when you kind of realized, and you could be in your 40s or 50s or even older and realize this and say, wow, okay, this is why I feel the way that I do. And, you know, put two and two together about like how you have been treated maybe by family members and regarded maybe like, you were, you have not been treated with res enough respect. Maybe that you've been, maybe you haven't been given, um, the benefit of the doubt about something, or, you know, maybe you're not treated like, you know, you really have what it takes. Uh, maybe that's another case of somebody who, um, some people in your life who, underestimate you and kind of marginalize you. I'm not saying this is going to be true for everyone because these are common themes anyway within families where some, you know, some of the um, children feel like they are not given the same amount of respect or, you know, treated with the same sense that they can accomplish things. And so that may have come up in some way. And then you realize that it really doesn't matter what other people say, even people within your own family, you know, whether it be parents or siblings, really doesn't matter if they will ever think of you in, a, in the way that you want them to. What you realize that you really are independent of their um, opinions of you. And that can be very exhilarating when you have pr previously felt that sense of pain. Um, you may feel like now you have this freedom to be who you are. And uh, that's really the best thing that can come out of it because you don't have to prove yourself any longer. And, uh, and that's where you gain your freedom. So that's a, that's a very nice thing. Um, so I'm trying to think about, let me see what else is going on here. That, cause I have it all written down. Okay. I'm going to talk about some possible new beginnings. Our new moon in Sagittarius is going to be at a late degree. It's going to be on 12, 18, uh, of 2017. So it's going to be like in one of the final degrees of Sagittarius. And um, so that's just a general new beginning. There's going to be a new moon in our second house of earned income. And that one is actually going to be in uh, 2016. So if you're uh, listening before 2017, it's going to be on December 29th. In 2017, there's not going to be a new moon in Capricorn in, in December. So 
that's our new our new moon for 2017 in the second house, actually in 2016. Um, and that can that could mean a new income stream, a new place of employment where you're making money. Maybe you're making better wages. Um, maybe just in a new way of making money, um, which is kind of like a new income stream. And of course, whenever you have something new happen, there's always the possibility for increase and things like that. New moon in the fifth house of romance on March 27th. So, um, that's obviously Aries and, um, that could be very, um, good for any new endeavors involving creativity or possible romances. If you're, if you're trying to conceive a child things like that. And then we have a new moon in career on September 20th. And, uh, that's the 10th house in Virgo. So that's a late degree of Virgo. So, um, it sounds to me like, um, you know, with, uh, Saturn in the first house and Jupiter in the 11th house, it sounds like, uh, we're kind of, um, paving the way for, you know, success, not only next year, I'm talking about 2017, but in the years to come. So, Anyway, Sagittarius, I hope you enjoyed this. Good luck to all of you. Take care. Bye.